China is about to build the first submarine high-speed rail tunnel. How is it different from the construction of high-speed rail on the ground? What are the requirements for the construction of submarine tunnels? How to excavate the undersea tunnel? Hi, everyone. Welcome to Hot Topics Time, a channel to interpret news from a new perspective and explore the wisdom behind the news. Before we start today's video, please subscribe to our channel, which is the encouragement that we can create more videos. Okay, let's continue the topic, China's Submarine High-Speed Rail Tunnel. Recently, another super project in China officially started, that is, the Shantaobei Undersea Tunnel, the world's first submarine high-speed rail tunnel with a design speed of 350 km per hour. Taking the high-speed rail under the sea is something that many people dare not even think about. Okay, let's figure it out together. The Shantaobei Undersea Tunnel is 9.8 km long and is the first high-speed rail tunnel in the world that crosses the seabed to connect the two sides of the strait. At present, the common submarine tunnels in the world are generally tunnels for cars and trains, such as the Saiken Tunnel in Japan, with a total length of 54 km and a depth of 240 m, which can only be used for trains, and the famous undersea tunnel in the English Channel, with a total length of 51 km, is also a tunnel for trains. In addition to these, the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge also has an undersea tunnel for cars. Therefore, there is still no high-speed rail tunnel in the world. In the face of such a situation, China, as the largest country with high-speed rail, is fully capable of building the world's first undersea tunnel for high-speed rail. The subsea tunnel is 9,781 meters long, and its structure is a single-hole double-track tunnel with a design speed of 350 kilometers per hour. Construction has officially started in March 2020. Since the submarine tunnel has to pass through multiple geological faults, how to ensure the smooth operation of the high-speed rail? In the face of complex water changes, how to ensure that the tunnel is not affected? As well as the operation of high-speed rail and the safety of tunnel construction under the high water pressure of the submarine tunnel, how did the Chinese engineers solve it? Let's move on. At present, the Shantau Bay subsea tunnel is still under construction as scheduled. The solutions to those problems will be revealed after the tunnel is completed. Now I am most interested in the construction method of the Shantau Bay submarine tunnel. Due to the special location and complex underground environment, in order to dig through this tunnel, China has used almost all the current mainstream excavation methods, including open-cut method, shield method, and mining method. So what's the difference between them? Why does an undersea tunnel need so many excavation methods? Well, in Shantau Bay, the underground stratigraphic structure has changed too much. From the softest silt to the hardest granite, from the 8-degree earthquake zone through 17 fault fracture zones, from land to sea, it must not only withstand the high pressure of the seabed, but also adapt to the erosion of seawater. For example, at the beginning of the soft and shallow entrance section, the cut and cover method is used. In fact, from its name, you can guess how the cut and cover method works. To put it simply, it is to first excavate the ground where the tunnel needs to be built, and then build the lining in the open air, that is, first build a structure that can wrap the tunnel support, and then dig out the first part. Fill it with soil and cover it up. This method is obviously the simplest, most economical and fastest option, but the disadvantage is also obvious, that is, it can only deal with softer soil. It is generally only used in the construction of urban subway stations and underground passages. As I said just now, this is just the entrance section at the beginning. Next, as the tunnel moves forward, we will face deeper and more complex silty soil layers, as well as harder and harder weakly weathered granite. 
So the players who came out became shield tunneling machines. The shield tunneling machine is mainly equipment for excavating subway tunnels. Its principle is very simple. You can imagine it as a large electric drill with a diameter of more than 10 meters. It drills forward at a speed of several meters every day and then sends the drilled soil, gravel, or mud back to the outside of the tunnel continuously through the conveyor belt. While drilling forward and transporting backwards, the tunnel walls are built up with prefabricated curved concrete to form the lining. In this way, while preventing the tunnel from collapsing, it also serves as a support surface to push itself forward. Under the support and cover of this behemoth, the safety of construction is also very high. Of course, no matter how good things are, they have disadvantages. For example, shield tunneling machines cannot dig hard rocks. Next, we will introduce the mining method. Since it is called the mine law, it must have something to do with mines. In fact, this method was inspired by the method of digging mines. The biggest feature of tunnel excavation using the mining method is the formation of the tunnel, which is not excavated at one time. How to understand it? Well, you can think about the cross-sectional shape of the tunnel, which is a square with a vault above it. If you follow the way of the shield tunneling machine, you can dig out this shape at one time, because the shield tunneling machine can use its own body to support during the excavation process. So, there is no fear of collapse, but nothing can support the mining method. Therefore, this cross-section will be divided into several times to dig. For example, first dig a semicircular tunnel as the initial vault, and then dig down a complete tunnel after this part is completed. Since the rock mass above it loses the support below, there is a risk of collapse at any time, so it is necessary to artificially support it while digging. Of course, the smaller the area, the easier it is to support, so start by digging small holes. Then slowly expand it into a large hole. Of course, as for which part to start digging first, there are also many things to pay attention to, which depends on the actual situation we are facing. For example, in the face of a soft rock layer that is not so stable, it is necessary to dig the top first, make a good support, and then start to dig down, and then build the left and right walls. It can also be excavated below, and then expanded upward, it can also be excavated two tunnels at the same time, and then dug through the middle together. Although there are various ways, it is still determined by the actual geological situation. Well, these methods are very clever, aren't? Of course, the smarter are the engineers who combined these methods to complete this incredible undersea high-speed rail tunnel. Are you looking forward to this undersea high-speed rail tunnel? If you were an engineer, what kind of super engineering would you want to build? Okay, that's all for today. Please put your comments below and share your insightful ideas with other people. Thank you so much for your continuous support. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. Hot Topics Time, time to explore the wisdom behind the news. We will see you in the next video.